Welcome to Pick Last in Gym Class. Today's guest is Joel Strong, the man behind Instagram account My Day with Leo, which has gained over 150,000 followers by combining street photography with celebrities' images for a truly unique digital experience. Welcome to the show, Joel. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm super excited. I have been really looking forward to meeting up with you. Um, Same. For years, literally Same. years now. Yeah. Um, I had found your Instagram account, My Day with Leo. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. I think I read an article or something had mentioned you, and I had just, just gotten an iPhone. I made the jump and uh, downloaded Instagram because my cool friends, my cool art friends had it, and um, stumbled across your account, and it was just a pleasure. It is a pleasure on the internet. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> That's sort of one of my goals in life. I have just a few, but being a Pleasure on the internet is one of them. <laughs> Providing yeah. pleasurable content. <laughs> it's, yeah. um, your account's incredible. Uh, there's so much, especially like as the years progress, there's, there's like a lot of darkness, I feel like, Ooh. on the internet. And there's just, oh, it's I just thought, heavy. No, no, I'm I not. I thought you went in with me and I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. Like, this is taking a turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, just in general, social media has been a cool platform to, for ideas, for content, for art, but it's also been like, it's made a lot of like really scary changes and it, it seems like it's really heavy a lot, but your account is just like, it's like a breath of fresh air. Awesome, thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I was feeling a lot of those things, you know, over the last like five years. And the more I, you know, like cultivated my voice, I guess. Um, one of the things I, I kept feeling the best was sort of, being positive online and like rays of sunshine and because I just wasn't finding that anywhere else. Like, yeah. Um, will, you, will you tell me the origin story of My Day with Leo? Okay. Um, the origin story. So see about five years ago I had a girlfriend who was infatuated with 90s Leo and I remember 90s Leo very much and going to grocery stores as a kid and seeing his face just everywhere. Um, my first sort of like girlfriends when I was like growing up, like had like Leo posters all over the wall. So he's always sort yeah, of a you know, figure was, in my life. I like, per personally, I like Devin Sawa, but, nice. you know, but yeah, also you know, Leonardo good. DiCaprio yeah. was ph phenomenal. Um, <laughs> and at that time, he had very little sort of like internet presence himself. And, you know, Instagram was just starting. And I remember thinking, wouldn't it be, because like people are starting to post selfies of themselves and you know, like. Food, that was very big. Food remember? was big and celebrities <laughs> were just starting to get on there. And I, you know, I was like, wouldn't it be great if like 90s Leo had an Instagram account? So that was sort of the origin tale of how I came up with the handle, My Day with Leo. And I had all these old magazines, like don't ask why, but like Tiger Beats and all those. From hey, like I had the those 90s. Too. <laughs> and I just started going through and cutting out like the Leonardo DiCaprio images. And then I would take them around the city and I would take a picture holding up the cutout, like, you know, over just like a like the Brooklyn Bridge or something. And um, and I would post the picture. And it started getting like a little traction. And I thought it was funny and it was like a daily project. And my girlfriend was getting a kick out of it. Um, and I, you know, started like looking at angles and trying to get better shots, funnier shots, um, and eventually came up with the concept of like just the little head that I could then put on somebody's body as they were walking around, because originally I was just working with full cutouts um, and there were limitations there, but I was like, well, this is fun, but it's also really challenging because somebody would be walking by or riding their bike by and you'd have to time it just right. But I started trying to put Leo on people's bodies as they were just doing stuff. <laughs> And, um, and like, I, I liked the visual effect of it. Um, and then from there, I started branching out. I think Beyonce was the next celebrity I did. And I wanted to do, at that time, she was starting to post those boomerangs of herself. And I was like, those are, it's just like eight stills, right? And I was yeah. like, well, all I'm doing is taking stills, so maybe I can make something move. And I got together with a friend and we did like, I was like, I want to do Beyonce dancing, but I don't know how it's going to work. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but we took pictures for like an hour. I edited, it was real funny, I didn't even have a computer at the time, so I had to go and edit at the Brooklyn Library. And, uh, <laughs> but they had like this really nice computer set up, but I edited it, I put it together and I liked it. And it was like eight frames and it was just like Beyonce dancing with like the little head. 
Um, and at that point, like a magazine reached out and they're like, we like what you're doing. Would you be interested in doing like a Madonna and some other like older celebrities? And I was like, you're like Tiger Beats only. <laughs> like, yeah. And, yeah, we are, sorry, just like teen hunks. That's my lane. You know, I'm not going to go away from that. Um, but again, I did that whole job at the Brooklyn Library editing on like 45 minute time limits because then you have to you have to leave your thing. So like the whole process, oh, yeah, you can't like, hog the computer. You the can't library. hog the computer. Yeah, they bump guy. you, you get logged right out and you have to get in line again <laughs> and you can't save anything either. No. So everything was very like, what can I do in sort of like a 45 minute time frame as far as like editing these things and getting it ready to go. Um, and I put together like my first professional job at the Brooklyn Library. And, you know, and from there, it's like I've kind of like evolved into different ideas with stop motion and visual effects. but. That's the origin tale of my account, My Day with Leo. And um, yeah. That's, that's an incredible story. That's, uh, first of all, I recently got a computer. So I totally <laughs> like, feel that pain. You're just like, ah, this won't get done. I didn't know what to do. Because yeah. they were like, hey, you know, there's like, is Garage Magazine and they're like a really cool magazine. And I didn't want to tell them. Yeah, you're like, no, yeah, that would be great <laughs> I if like, I could I do that. I can't That'd do cool the project. job you're hiring me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, you know, hustled to the library. like. I think I was there for two weeks, eight hours a day. Wow. Just like going through the queue. Yeah, you gotta take breaks, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. forty five every other forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah, every forty five minutes. And That's... I was getting bumped by like little teens like playing games. And I was just like, you guys are hot. They're like, you're on the nice computer. <laughs> <laughs> I was immediately <laughs> mad at like these kids like just playing like little video games with their buddies. It's yeah. like, I'm working. Yeah, here. you're like, this is work. <laughs> I'm working. Um, do you come from a creative background? Uh I think personally, yes. Uh, my, you know, my father was a preacher and my mother was a teacher. Um, but like one of my first things that I fell in love with was Calvin and Hobbes, like, you know, getting the newspaper and opening it up and reading it. Yeah. And I think there's something that kind of hit me with like Calvin was kind of on his own a little bit, had his buddy that was like his imaginary friend. And Hobbes is real, by and, the way. <laughs> right, Hobbes is very I real. That. Yeah, he's very real. real. <laughs> but, <laughs> Don't say that. I'm not trying to hear that. <laughs> Imagine it was the wrong word. We're going to cut that. We'll cut that. <laughs> I misspoke. Um, <laughs> but I identified with that a lot as somebody who is a little introverted and would kind of just go and create in my room and just do little things and had little, you know, projects. I'd like cut stuff out of the newspaper and um, I was like a big sports nut. And one of the things I would do is like, you know, like I think it's normal for kids to kind of like pretend they're a professional athlete and kind of like play, you know? And so I'd do that with like the crowd cheering, but then I would take stats. So I had like these notebooks of well, stats. Well, yeah, you wanted to, you know, monitor your progress. <laughs> like I would do little like box <laughs> scores, you know? And so I had like entire notebooks of that, like just like filled with, like little box scores and numbers. And it's like my own little world, like I was, you know, creating these full seasons and stuff. Um, and. So I think like the, the creativity has always been there, but as far as like education goes, I just kind of, you know, got my degree in English literature because I liked reading and um, never really thought like, you know, like I could ever yeah. do anything that anybody else would want. Like I would write poetry in like college and stuff, but um, I was always creative, but never pursued it on a, like a big scale um, until this account kind of happened and the yeah. job started. Sometimes it finds you. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it did. Something that I really like about like your page about my day with Leo, um, you like the page itself has always had this like sense of just like just really genuine, I guess really genuine goodness. But like as Instagram the platform progressed, like now we have Instagram stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like. What you've done with your stories has been really cool too, because like your page itself is like definitely like the visual, the fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you've taken an initiative, I feel like, on those Instagram stories to kind of talk about like the real stuff, you know, yeah. things like that, where it's like where we're feeling a little bit less sure of ourselves when that does happen. Yeah. Um, the little yellow notepad. The, right, my little yellow notepad. It's such a friendly uh, notepad. So yeah, I, uh, it is. I, <laughs> I have like stacks of those and I, I find a lot of comfort in like just the, the uniform notepad that I write on. Um, 
for an odd, for some reason in my head, posting to Instagram like an official post has always felt like a really big deal. And, you're published. And, <laughs> it's published. Right. And I've always wanted that to kind of keep within a certain aesthetic that I have. And so I got into that and then like just like playing with different ways you can communicate to people that I like I started like handwriting and writing notes and then I would just post a picture of like I write like a journal that was just like today and it was like this is what I did today and it was you know fairly ordinary things yeah and instead of talking about it I would just post a picture of like what I wrote you know like my little journal on my little yellow pad and people started really responding to that. There's something like, maybe it's like a, also like nostalgic about it for maybe like a certain age range. Cause I feel like, like even you saying, you're like, instead of recording somebody or instead of taking a selfie, you know, you use the pad. And it's almost like that in, the, in this day and age now, that's almost like more human mm -hmm. to do and more thoughtful. I was thinking about this and I was having, so I like write a lot of letters that I send through the mail and somebody, you know, like was writing about how sort of like romantic the idea of letter writing is. And, and I had this thought that, well, we all come from like this long line of letter writers, <laughs> like our parents, Somewhere, our grandparents. Yeah, somebody back like, when we was are, writing letters. All of them, Somebody's like all writing of them letters, have yeah. been writing letters. <laughs> and so if you think about the way genetics work and the way we're hardwired to things, I do think there's something that we respond to the physical word and the handwriting and even maybe sending something through the mail in a different way than we're responding to these visual yeah. cues and like these videos. Um, it's, you know, it's like almost instinctual. And that was the end of my thought and I didn't research it. So I don't know if I'm even like qualified <laughs> no, to talk about it. No, it sounds like science, it. it really does. But, <laughs> but it's sort of, you know, it's like the birds know to fly south and we think like, like handwriting is really cool and maybe it's just like a human trait, but I was like, wow, like my mom probably wrote and got letters. My grandma def definitely did. Great grandparents certainly did. Somebody and has they, a plume somewhere down the And bloodline. they just all thought letters are really exciting. Even if they never passed that on to me to where yeah. my mom was like, you should write people letters. It was still sort of just inherently already there. And I, I love it and I love getting letters and I like sending them. Um, and I was also finding myself having a really hard time like responding to emails or DMs yeah. and just not doing it. And even if it was somebody I really loved and I was just like, I'm totally just like... It is respond. really hard to get those things lost in the shuffle. Even yeah. text messages now, I feel yeah. like everything's so automated and like sterile almost yeah. that it's just, um, yeah, you don't connect with it. Yeah, you write me a letter, I will respond. I will take that letter to a library or to a cafe and I will write something back and I'll put a stamp on it and it's like my Response rate is near 100% on my inbox. How many stamps have you bought <laughs> recently? Oh, God, so many. I recently many. bought a book. Like, I probably send about five to 10 letters a week. And then I have like my poem of the month club where I send about 10 of those. So just in a month, I'm probably, that right there would be on the high end, 50 stamps Dang. and envelopes. A month. A month? Yeah. On the low end, 40. Will you tell me more about the poem of the month club? Oh, OK. Um, so last year I was kind of thinking, I personally have always had a hard time getting into like the commerce space and I feel very uncomfortable there. I don't know why, like selling myself or selling a thing. And I thought, you know, I like write a lot and I was like, well, wouldn't it be neat if I just, you know, set up like a little Patreon account and people could like subscribe to the poem of the month club and that would be a way to like, they can give me a few bucks a month and I will handwrite. Yeah, you're right. I got to pay poem. for all these stamps. Yeah. Yeah, I got to pay for the stamps and the <laughs> yeah. envelope. So, um, and I was like, well, this is a good trade off. And, you know, it's like I handwrite, I write the poem throughout the month. And at the end of the month, I handwrite each one. And it's the same poem. And then I take a pencil and I sign the back and number it. And I put it in the envelope and I mail it to the person that subscribed. But it, uh, so I've done a few of them so far, like, First one was like really long, and I was like, "Oh God, I'm not doing that yeah, again." Like it's a full sonnet. I, like, yeah, you're like, "Whoa, there's like, a lot of people." A bunch of them. It took me like a couple of days. Second one was shorter. It's like I'm, I'm still finding like what I want to write, but it's totally like the deal I have is I won't post it. I won't show it to anybody else. You know, it's just sort of if you're in the list, yeah, you get the poem and it's yours. And people are sending me pictures. They're like framing them and putting them on their walls. Oh, that's and I'm so like, cool. That's wonderful. You know, it's like yeah. and it's your thing. You know, like they can show it if they want. But 
um, I, w I just wanted to make it like a little something that was something that I could do for people who were like, wanted to opt into something, yeah, I guess. Yeah, who want to support you. And yeah. so I could get like a little bit more like confidence doing that or like comfort level doing that. I was a personal trainer in college and I was a bad personal trainer, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, I was an even worse salesperson. So like, I didn't those, make, are really, those are two bad qualities. I didn't make a very yeah. good money. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, and again, like your page just has this personality that's like so gentle and kind and loving. Um, but at the same time, like bills be coming in, you know. So it's mm -hmm. hard. To, it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people, I think, to turn around, especially creative people, especially people. I've noticed there's so many like parallels between athletics and art, because both of them are crafts. Like you build on your skill, but you also right. just like pour your soul into yeah. it. And it is hard to turn around and be like, how do I monetize? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, how do I pay my bills yeah. with this? But um, that's really cool. That poem does. Does each poem, like, do they have certain themes? Is there, like, one consistent theme, or is it just kind of...? Um, yeah, they're, they're, you, like, if you were to see them, I think it would appear that they're written by the same person, because there's sort <laughs> of a voice I yeah. have. And I, I am big on the mundane, like, the fat, like fantastical mundane for me, like, uh, just a walk around a neighborhood and then something kind of bizarre happens, yeah. or maybe it's just in my head kind of thing, like, oh, they can't really, like somebody maybe starts floating or something. Yeah. Like those sorts of things where it's like this ordinary life, but then there's like some magic in it. Those are the themes I tend to like to write about. Because um, I, I don't know, for me, like I get a lot of comfort out of the ordinary, out of the routine, out of these are the places I like to go. Once too many people know me there, I don't want to go there anymore. Yeah, you're anymore. like, then, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's like, that. That's those are the themes that I tend to write on. Um, and yeah, I, I thought about maybe doing like a little more of a chronology, but I think when it'll all come together, there'll be like a consistent sort yeah. of like body of work um, that'll be impossible for anybody to collect because they'll be all over. It'll be, yeah, you have your fingerprint <laughs> all over this world. Yeah. Okay, so what is the furthest you've ever sent a poem or a letter? Which one's gone further? Okay, yeah, I've, uh, I've sent a letter to Moscow, Russia. That was the furthest letter. Pretty far. Yeah, that's pretty far. <laughs> and uh, I've received letters from, like, all over, but there's some cool little town in Norway where somebody sent me a couple of little letters, and I'm forgetting the name of the town right now, but it's like, Got like this cool little postal code. Oh, cool! Yeah. Do you, you keep Do you keep all your letters? Yeah, I've got all of them, and then I have them, you know, stacked by ones I've replied to, and then the ones I need to get to. But yeah, of course. To do, yeah. <laughs> to read. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I spilled coffee on some of them, and that was a little traumatizing. <laughs> it was like that felt really bad. <laughs> <It's> stressful. <laughs> but, you know, it was like a little coffee stain, stain on like five, and I responded very like. <laughs> Apologetically, you were like, I am so Well, sorry. no, I no, it was just from in my head. I, I felt like I had damaged something that oh, was like, yeah. you know, that I wanted to keep forever. And so I remember thinking, fe like feeling that and being like, these are, these are really important to me. And it's like, I'm going to keep them all. Like, I think if I were to lose one, I'd feel very rotten about it. Yeah. So my date with Leo has progressed now to a slew of different celebrities. Yeah. That you use. Um, have you ever, has, it, has a celebrity ever contacted you, one that you've used before? Do you have any stories like that? Um, well, yeah, a couple. There's, uh, it's, it's always flattering when it happens because I, like, I didn't know they followed me or something. Yeah, because you don't really, do you tag people? Do you tag them? I don't tag people, and it's a little easier now to like, figure out who follows you, but in the early days, like, you had no idea. And I remember I did like a Wonder Years Fred Savage post like I was doing like TV bud series and like the third comment was yay I finally made it right and I was like <laughs> and I read it and I looked at it as like the Fred Savage and I was like no this is just it can't be the Fred and Savage. I clicked on it and it was the Fred Savage <laughs> and I was like oh my god like Fred That's Savage so cool. close. and I was super excited and um and then the other one would be and this is kind of like a big deal because I just love her so much but I've been a big fan of hers for a while, but Janelle Monet, like she follows me and when I do a story or something that has her in it, like she'll watch my stories, but she'll see that. And then we DM, That's which is so like a cool. like another level of like 
like when her album came out, I think that was like last year or the year before. Like I just, I didn't think she'd read it, but I was like, hey Janelle, I'm like listening. This is amazing. Congratulations yeah, on all your hard work. And she responded within like 10 minutes. And I was like, no way, like your album's out. She's like, like we're friends, yeah. yeah it's like, she's like, thanks so much. And I was like, that's crazy that you're like taking time out of your day. And I'm like, I'm talking to no one day, like, uh, like when her album comes out. And I was like freaking out. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are a couple of the ones that I like get the most excited about. Um, and I, I think are like really neat and make me like a little happy. Um, but usually I try to let celebrities also have their space yeah. and not over tag or not. They have a routine yeah. too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. need a safe space I don't want to be blowing them up. Like, yeah. Joel, yes. I want to thank you so much for coming. I'm so grateful to have finally met you. I know. It's so cool. This Thanks for having me. This is the great. best day. Yeah. I know. It's been awesome. Thank I've been looking you. forward to it since you asked me. So. Years. Yeah. Years with an S. Well, yeah. The Even before sign. you asked me for this, I was looking forward to someday meeting you. Yes. But then when you asked about this particularly, then I was extra excited about this. <laughs> together. And together time. we've leveled up since in our friendship. I know, right? <laughs> this has been amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for watching this week's show. Be sure to check out the Pick Blast and Gym Class podcast for an extended interview with Joel available on all podcasting platforms.